I tell you to stop, you will stop. I need to watch my show. I can't stop. I have to mow or the grass will get too tall. Now listen here, you dumb grunt. I will not have you interrupting my show. R slash Entitled Parents Our first story we'll be reading today. Entitled Mom Tries to Make Me Stand on a Bus in Crutches. After that, Entitled Parent Tries to Stop Me from Mowing My Lawn. From user Derpy Derp. After that, Entitled Mother Tries to Steal My Seat. From user Acer1. And then we'll be finishing up with Steal My Phone Case and I'll Spoil Your Holiday. From user Pregolas99. Thank you so much to our authors for letting us read your stories. And if you're an author who would like to hear your story on the channel, please submit them to the r slash Mr. Reddit subreddit. And welcome to the newest members of the Re-Army. Gene Martin, Kang, and Biajan. And if you're new, join the Re-Army by subscribing for new stories from Reddit every single day. Entitled Mom Tries to Make Me Stand on a Bus in Crutches. I'm on mobile, so sorry for any format issues. This one is also pretty dialogue heavy. When I was a freshman in high school, I dislocated my kneecap. Normally, this type of injury heals up really fast, but for some reason, in all the three times I've done it, it's taken me months to heal. About three weeks after I injured my knee, I was taking the public bus to school. I sat in the very front reserved for disabled and elderly people. Now at the time, I had just taken off my leg immobilizer and was waiting on a knee brace to be ordered, so I had no brace on my knee and couldn't bend it at all. The only way you could tell I was injured was the fact that one knee was twice the size as my other, and I had crutches next to me. Enter the entitled parent. We'll call her E.M. Entitled mom stormed onto the bus, dragging her poor kid behind her, a four to five year old boy who was fairly quiet during the incident. After she had paid her fare, she sped down the aisle and kicked my extended leg. Remember, I can't bend it. I cried out in pain and clutched my knee, and she scoffed. No apology or anything, just scoffed. Okay, fine. I just tell her not to worry about it, and she walks away further down the bus looking for a seat. She juts her head around like a chicken searching for a seat on this already full bus and lets out a long, exasperated huff before turning to look at me and the single empty seat beside me. Entitled Mom approaches and asks, Can my son use the seat beside you? I nod my head and gesture him to sit down. After he sat down, the entitlement began. So, when are you going to get up? I asked if my son could use that seat. Obviously, I need to sit next to him. He's too young to be alone. I'm sorry, but I can't really move. There's no more open seats, and I'm not really in the condition to stand. I point towards my crutches. But there's a standing bar right next to you you can use. Don't lie. I hit your leg earlier and you said not to worry about it. Can't you just stand instead? I'm not stupid. I know those crutches are only up front for emergencies. They're not yours. You're just sitting up here sticking your legs out into the aisle to act injured. Go stand like everyone else your age. I swear, you teens are so entitled. Look, you can ask the bus driver whether or not I came on this bus with crutches. My leg is out in the aisle because I can't bend it. I've spent the last few weeks in a leg immobilizer. Can you just leave me alone? Okay, fine. But what happened to your leg anyway? It doesn't look injured at all. I dislocated my knee. Entitled Mom's face goes red, and she grabs my injured leg and tries to forcefully bend it. She realizes she can't because the joints are locked and pulls the stop wire. I scream out in pain. And the bus driver stops and walks over to where I'm sitting. He says he's heard everything, but minded his own business because he didn't think she would get physical. When the bus driver admonishes Entitled Mom's behavior, she turns into a sputtering mess. I wasn't part of this particular conversation because I was too busy ugly crying. What the heck did you think you were doing when you assaulted a crippled child? I thought she was lying. I've seen people dislocate their knee before. Her story didn't add up. It doesn't take that long to heal. So instead of calling her out, you decided to try to force her leg to bend? It's not up to you to decide if she's lying or not. Get the heck off my bus. But I have to take my son to daycare. 
You can't just kick us off. We have places to be. Okay, if you don't get off my bus right now, the only place you'll be going is in a jail cell. The entitled mom's eyes went wide, and she grabbed her child, dragging him off with her out the back exit. Bus driver apologizes for not stepping in sooner and tries to calm me down. Through my tears, I told him not to worry and just start the bus again. The pain eventually subsided, but I spent the rest of the day icing my knee in the nurse's office. I never got an apology or a name, but I wish I could go back and press charges. People are seriously crazy sometimes. Edit for clarity. This happened seven years ago, so I doubt the bus company has any video surveillance still around. I never got her name either. Since then, I've dislocated my kneecap twice, every two years since the first time. Currently, I'm doing fine and being very careful trying to build muscle so it doesn't happen again. I'll post an update if I end up dislocating once again in 2020. Also, she couldn't bend my knee. She kept trying to force it, but a locked joint is a locked joint. It wasn't budging, and I was too busy crying in pain to fight her off or beat her with my crutches. Next we've got... Entitled Parent Stops Me From Mowing My Lawn Hi, Mr. Reddit. I recently joined Reddit after watching your videos, so I'll keep it clean. Little bit of background. I'm a weird kid and kind of antisocial, and I hadn't made many friends until I made it to middle school. I also mow mine, my grandma's, and my dad's lawn. I live half-half my parents. They divorced. And in doing so, I make a good bit of money. And it's how I saved for a lot of stuff I own, like my phone, Pokemon cards, etc., so this starts on a hot summer weekend when I was mowing my grandma's lawn. It was really hot, as summers in Colorado can get pretty hot. And as I was mowing my grandma's lawn, I see a kid, maybe 9 or 10, walk up and try to shout something over the lawnmower. I stop, and the conversation is as follows. The kid was actually pretty nice, but the mother is a whole nother story. Can you please stop? My mom said to tell you stop, she's watching TV. And I want to play outside, but it's too loud. He actually said this, but I don't know why. Well, I'm sorry. I have a little brother, and I've been raised always to be polite to kids. I can't stop. I have to mow or the grass will get too tall. Okay. Well, if you want, since your mom is watching TV, I can hang out with you for a bit. He was a new neighbor, having moved in less than a week ago, and I wanted to be nice, as one of the neighbors was completely messed up. If anybody wants, I can post stories about this horrific neighbor. Sure, mom can be mean while she watches TV. Cool. Here, do you want to grab popsicles and put them in the freezer? And then when I'm done, we can pull them out and draw with chalk. I love popsicles. How will I know that you're done? Just listen for the mower to stop, then come on over. I patted him on the back and let him go home. I realized afterward that maybe it was a bit much, but I wanted him and his mom to see that not all the neighbors were a bunch of jerks like Bad Neighbor. After maybe 10 or 20 minutes, I lose track of time mowing because I listen to music through Bluetooth headphones. I see a whale of a lady with a typical Karen outfit and haircut walk up to me in pajamas. I hate to think what the lady would have been like in actual clothes. I don't remember this part very well as it was mostly screaming. What are you doing, you idiot? What? I'm mowing my grandma's lawn. What? No, I had my son. She said this with such a bad tone, it made me feel bad for the kid. Come over and tell you to stop. Me, being the insanely polite person I am. Sorry, I told him he and you would have to wait. I need to get this done. No. She proceeded to screech at me. <coughs> if I tell you to stop, you will stop. I need to watch my show. If you don't stop, I'm calling the police. Stop now, or I'll... I cut her off. I'm sorry. I told Nice Kid that when I was done, we could have popsicles. Now, would you like to... No, I won't let you give my kid your poisoned popsicles, you idiotic grunt. There was some not-needed language there. I'm sorry you think that, but I have to mow. If I didn't mow too many times in a row... I wouldn't be able to do it and would thus end my ability to save money like a responsible human. I know you and your son are new to the neighborhood and wanted to be kind. Entitled Mom cuts me off this time. Now listen here, you dumb grunt. I will not have you interrupting my show and I'm telling you now. Stop mowing or I'm calling the police. 
I'm usually calm in these situations, but this whale had refused the most profound kindness I had ever tried to give, and I lost my temper pretty easily at this point. Now listen here. Insert a dozen different bad words and random mean stuff here. I am sick of your stupidity, and I have nearly known you for ten minutes. Leave now. Go ahead, call the police. We have cameras. You little crap. Now listen here. I cut her off. No, you listen here. If you don't leave, I will call the police and have you disowned by the neighbors if you don't leave and stop being so rude to me, especially after I offered you kindness. I actually had the power to have her disowned as there is a neighborhood committee for neighborly disputes after what crap neighbor did. My grandma is on this committee and having done a few odd jobs for the neighbors means they trusted me. So the wild Karen backed off for now. In the end, she never called the police, as the other neighbors had been just or even kinder than I had been and didn't risk being eternally shunned by her neighbors. And in the end, I have popsicles with the kid, and he's into Pokemon and such, so we get along, and occasionally I babysit him for his dad when the mom's away and he needs to do something. Hope you enjoyed, Mr. Reddit. I really enjoy your videos, and if this does end up on one, subscribe to Mr. Reddit. Oh, nice. Thanks, Derpy Derp. Next we've got, Entitled Mother Tries to Steal My Seat. I always mention I live in a small town because those who haven't read my stuff need to grasp that it's a small town and you do things in a small town that you wouldn't necessarily do in a larger one. You also tend to run into a lot of entitled parents, especially if you have anything to do with the school system or young people. I have one of those personalized deluxe folding camp chairs with a drink holder, pop-up table, and umbrella. It's very nice and pretty much lives in my trunk. Normally, you would watch a possession like that very carefully in a public place. In a small town, it's not generally a big issue. You set it up and wander off to talk with people, etc. Besides, it has my name on it, so that helps. Reserved seating whenever I set it up. I love baseball. It's probably my favorite spectator sport. My nephew was on his high school team, and it was a great team. I never missed a home game. On this day, I set up my chair without the umbrella. Then I wandered over to the concession area to get some nachos and a drink. I wandered back, and someone is sitting in my chair. I was understandably puzzled. It's my chair. It has my name on it. More importantly, the person sitting in it knows that it is not their chair. This has never happened before. I place my drink on the bleachers and eat a couple of nachos while pondering the situation. After the third or fourth chip, I decided to say something. Excuse me, this is my chair. No one was sitting in it. First come, first served. Not how that works. I own the chair. Just sit on the bleachers. No, I'm going to sit on my chair. You are going to move. No, I'm not. I got here first, and I have a child playing baseball today. I deserve this spot. Go away! Lady, this is not the majors. Everyone here has a kid playing. I know the parents of every kid on our team. You are not one of them. It doesn't matter anyway, because it's my chair. I'm the mother of... Kid on opposing team. They sit on the other side. Fine. She stands up and proceeds to try and take my chair with her. I snatch it out of her hands. Give me that chair! No, it's mine. I'll call the police. No need. They are already here. I point out several people. That guy, and that guy, and that guy over there. Their kids were on the team. You jerk. You just figured that out? Pretty slow on the uptake there, princess. She wandered off, and I sat down in my chair to enjoy my nachos. A few minutes later, she's back with the only cop actually in uniform. That is my seat. I was sitting there first. Hey, Acer, what's up? Crazy people doing crazy things. You? This woman is claiming she was here first, and you took her seat. Not possible. It is possible. I was here first, and then you came and demanded I move, and then stole my seat. I own the chair. It doesn't matter. I was here first. I was actually here first. Then I went to get snacks. No, I was here first. And I need that spot to watch my son play ball. I had to be here first because I own the chair. 
It didn't arrive before I did. I put it here. Your son plays for the other team, and they sit on the other side. If you hadn't been in the wrong place, you couldn't have tried to steal my chair. Now go away. At this point, there are several out-of-uniform cops just milling around, watching, and trying not to crack up. This woman is getting more and more upset, and I'm just not. They know me and can see I'm playing with her. Ma'am, you need to leave this woman and her chair alone. Please go to the other side and sit on the bleachers. But the chair is nicer, and I was here first. Ma'am, she brought the chair and put it here. She does this every game. She owns it, and that makes it hers. You need to leave now. You don't want to spoil the game for your son. I'm a single mother. I'm not surprised. How dare you be so rude? Your parents should have taught you some respect. My parents taught me not to steal. They also taught me not to allow some idiot to try and push me around. If you don't leave, I'm going to press charges for your attempted theft that you admitted to and then report you to your school and have you banned from all future away games. Go to the bleachers on the other side and leave me alone. Now. She looked from me to the cop who nodded and moved back towards the bleachers on the other side. There was a kid in the opposing dugout who was looking decidedly embarrassed. The woman glared at me all through the game. It was a great game. And our final story of the day. Steal my phone case and I'll spoil your birthday. Obligatory mobile warning. I'm English, but spelling is not my strong point. Feel free to roast me if I get stuff wrong. Hi, Mr. Reddit. My partner and I love your channel and have watched all of your videos. I was watching one of them and my partner told me a story that I just had to post for you. This one is from my partner's perspective, as we had not met at the time. The cast. Me, the handsome devil of my partner. And entitled woman, the Karen of all Karens, along with Karen's poor husband. I ordered a phone case from a major seller which sells everything that can be sold ever. I specifically got the case for my phone, which was not able to fit any other kind of phone. Samsung Galaxy S7, brand new to me at the time. I was only 16, so many years ago. The case was to be delivered whilst I was at work and all my family were out. The delivery company in the UK is terrible at times for delivering parcels to neighbors. This was what happened to me. It was taken to my neighbor's neighbor, entitled woman. I was notified of this by a slip of paper through my door. I went to collect the case from them, and this ensued. Hi. I've had a parcel delivered here. I hadn't shown her the delivery note. No, there's been nothing delivered here. I showed her the note. Well, this says that you have had something delivered for me here. Well, we've ordered one as well. She didn't know what I was even talking about, and it could have been something completely different. What phone is it for? Well, um, mine. She had an iPhone, so clearly wrong. Well, it's actually for a Galaxy S7, and it's got, insert fantasy show about space, on the back. Well, we've ordered it. The door was slammed in my face, and I didn't get my phone case back. The revenge. The entitled mom had a delightful blue car that poor husband just cleaned before the trip on holiday for their family. Because of the deep cleaning, he'd have to leave the car windows open to allow the car seats to dry. I luckily had, at the time, a wonderful Staffordshire Terrier cross with a Labrador called Buzz. He was one of the goodest of boys and has now sadly passed, who fortunately had regular sessions in the garden and did most of his business there. It was my job that day to clean up his mess, and I had a wonderful idea spring into my head. I took the mess and covered the inside of the car with it, scrubbing it into the seats on the steering wheel and put some in the air vents for good measure. The following morning, I was looking out of my bedroom window, waiting until the family came and got into the car. I noticed as soon as they got in the car, they knew something was wrong, but seemed to ignore it as poor husband turned on the ignition and put the AC on. I forgot to mention that Entitled Woman was wearing white shorts. The family then proceeded to get out of the car screaming and shouting that there was dog mess all over their car and clothes. I emailed the retailer explaining the situation and they sent out a new phone case and gave me a full refund and have since changed how deliveries in that area are handled. 
My partner moved away and met me a few years later. How dare you put dog poop in my car? Drop a ring in the comments, or I'm going to take your parcels and tell you I don't have them. And congrats to our re-generals of the day, James Valen, Corsi Husky, and Shannon O'Neill. That's all for now, but don't be blue. I'll be back soon with more stories for you. Remember to listen to Mr. Reddit every night, so your dreams will be wonderful like you are and bright.